Let's start the game one. Here we go. Good afternoon, guys. Can you guys hear me? Oh, sorry about your life. No problem. You guys has a long break after the sermon. It's a good thing though. I don't want to. I don't want you to be so tired to have a lot of information right after sermon. Um. Okay, today we don't have Mr. Pong, <laughs> so he's in his vacation. Um, let me see. Okay, anyway, I think today we are quite late, so I think we should start right now. But um, before we start, let's uh, pray together, as we usually do. Okay. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. For you are the God who created the world with your word. And you are the Father who called us to be your children through your, through your love and the grace. Um, although we were born within, you chose us in Christ before the creation of the world, so that we can reconcile to you through your Son. Heavenly Father, today is the first day of the Holy Week, and we come together to commemorate uh, commemorate the suffering that our Lord Jesus Christ endured for us. May your Holy Spirit help us today and become help us to become more like Jesus and to conform him in our own lives so that your name will be glorified. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, okay. Um First, let me share the point. There we go. And uh, here. Okay, this is it. Can you guys see the PowerPoint? Yep. Okay, great. Um. Okay, as we always did. Um. Let's uh, briefly review what we learned last week. Um, first, I guess you, you guys all remember that we studied the conversion of the Gentile to Judaism through Baptist. And because the Talmud's description of conversion explains the meaning of being born again in Jesus Christ's conversation with Nicodemus. Uh, do you remember? Who is need to enter Paul called Mikvah to purify themselves, and the Gentiles who convert to Judaism had to undergo the same ritual. You can see this, the Paul, remember, they had to immerse in the water if they want to convert to Judaism. And of course, if you are a man, you have to uh, go through the, uh, the circumcision. That's another thing. Anyway, when Jesus mentioned being born again, the Jewish people's first reaction would be that it means a change of faith. So what Jesus mean by being born again was to tell both Jewish and the Gentiles that the law, which makes people be aware of their sin, is no longer a burden and a curse for sinners. Instead, the salvation in Jesus Christ became the core of our faith. Um, do, do you guys um, get the, the meaning of this picture? It's a really nice one. This is when this is a perspective of Peter when he about to join, you know, in Galilee Lake and uh, and uh, Jesus is reaching out his hand to Peter. So this is a really nice one. Uh, I took it in a, in a, I took this picture in a Galilee in our seminary in South Korea. Anyway, um, you should know that the entire Old Testament pointing to the Messiah, who is Jesus Christ, and he would complete God's plan of redemption in this world, and that's why we have a, the famous John three sixteen saying, "For God so loved the world." that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
But how was this plan of redemption accomplished? How did Jesus Christ die on the cross? What does his death mean for Christian? And this is what we will learn today, and it is also in preparation for Easter Sunday next week. Um, but first, let's let's read the scripture. Um, let me see. How about Jasper Leon? Is, is she here? Could you please read the scripture loudly for us? Jasper is not here. Oh, not here. Okay. Let me see who else is. Oh. This game is too small. Hmm. Let me choose someone. Does anyone wants to read it for us? Maybe Helen Chu. She unfortunately is also not here. <laughs> oh. Okay. Two for two, and um, <laughs> Gao Ying Ying. Did I get a three for three? Oh no, she is here. Okay. <laughs> Please. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to let the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God will love the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish for having eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is a judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their work was evil. For everyone who does wicked things takes the light and does not come into the light, does not come to the light. His work should be exposed. But whoever does what it should come to light so that it may be clearly seen that it has been carried out from God. Well, thank you. Thank you for reading the scripture. And um oh, let me see here. You know, every Christian knows that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. It's like Christianity required course 101. It's the first class you're going to learn. But in the perspective of redemptive plan of God, why did God arrange such thing? Um, in the Old Testament, God gave us the Ten Commandments uh, through Moses. And uh, an important principle of God's law is that sin causes cost. That's very important. And the cost is the death of the sacrificial animal at that time. However, not all sins can be resolved by sacrifices. Um, some particularly serious sins means the death penalty. Uh, let me give you a few examples of such sins. Um, don't be too surprised. Adultery means the death penalty, according to Levit Leviticus 20, uh, 2010. And not keeping the Sabbath <laughs> means the death penalty, according to Exodus 31, 14. Human trafficking means the death penalty, according to Exodus 21, 16. And homosexuality means the death penalty, according to Le Le uh, Leviticus 20, 13. And uh, <clears throat> blasphemy against the name of the Lord, another death penalty according to Leviticus 24, 16. These are very strict laws, and the Bible doesn't record how many people die because of the law every year. But I guess there must be many, and probably 100 times more if we applied it in Canada. Um, but the cause of com uh, committing another, another uh, other sins that do not lead to death penalty is also wide, uh, quite high. You have to sacrifice your goat, your, your cow, and other animals if you do something wrong, have to do something wrong. And um, at that time, the animals 
are the one of the most important um wealth of people. So it's like if you do something wrong, you 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 have to burn your car or you burn your bicycle, something like that. So it's not cheap. People are gonna pay for it. Um yeah. And in general, the law of the old testament on the one hand tells us that God is holy, righteous, and the justice. On the other hand, it tells us that as God's people, we must live out God's holiness, righteousness, and the justice in our lives. This is so important. This is why God gave, gave the law to us. And, uh, and the death of Jesus was to permanently solve the problem of the cause of sin through his sacrifice once for all. As incarnated God, Jesus himself has infinite value so that uh, the effect of his death can cover all human beings in history and in the future. As long as sinners truly believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, most importantly, Jesus uh, satisfy, uh, satisfied God's attributes of holiness, righteousness, and justice. Um, some people like to say that God's love is unconditional. God loves you for who you are. This is 100% nonsense. God's love upon us is built on the sacrifice of Jesus, and without his crucifixion, we are all doomed to the fire of hell. However, the story doesn't end here. Well, Jesus solved the problem of our sin. We, are, we, we still have not solved our own problems. As Jesus commands us to follow him and conform to his example and bear our, our own cross, what does the death of Jesus Christ mean for our faith in practice? This is the question I'm asking everyone to think about this week. And uh, how does our faith reflect the death of Jesus Christ's death? I hope everyone prepares the, your own answer, your own heart and right now and uh, share it when it's your turn. Uh, even if your, your answer is the same as someone else, it's okay. Um, I, I really... Uh, like to know how do you understand it and uh, you know so this time i really wish you you could start uh, you could share about it and let's start from how about the last row on the left just just simply sharing what do you think about this question yeah the last row on the left who is the one I, I couldn't hear you. Uh, I need to think. He needs time to think. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think I, uh, let me stop this. Oh, okay. Then I can see you better. <laughs> okay. And uh, the next person. I like to. She also needs time to think. <laughs> okay. Any different answers from this? Uh, oh. Uh, so the question is like, what does the death of Jesus Christ mean for faith practice? Is that what it means? Oh, is that another question? Um, so you need to see the question again? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, here we go. This. <laughs> Can you see? Okay. I'll I'll answer it. Okay. Thank you. That would be so helpful. 
Okay. Um, so what does the death of Jesus Christ mean for faith and practice? Um, <clears throat> well, we know that the death of Jesus Christ is what makes us um, sort of like forgiven and um, and we as Christians need to repent and believe in Jesus to be saved. So I think practically what that means for us is that since we have repented of our sins um, and we are therefore saved, uh, like on, on this path of sanctification, um, we no longer are uh, slaves to sin um, and uh, the Holy Spirit works in us so that we will desire more and more to do things that are more righteous. Uh, and so um, even though we do sometimes sin, um, it's not like we are, it's not like uh, our old selves where we were, we were deliberately sinning. Um, yeah, it's sort of, it's, it's sort of like this new relationship um, yeah, just put, you're just dead to sin and you're alive in Christ. Okay, thank you for your answer. It's really impressive. Yeah, you say, um, yeah, basically to live out like the, the character of Jesus Christ. And um, yeah, it's quite comprehensive. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. Yeah. And this time, I hope everybody can say something. I just really curious about how do you understand your faith according to the death of Jesus? So, so far we have a three answers. And uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd like to hear the rest of you, just anything, you know. Mm. Oh, I really hope I, I can be there sitting with you. Oh. And, and I can bring some candies if you give me an answer. <laughs> I, I will. Oh, Joshua. Great. Oh, I'm done. Hey. Um, I think the death of Jesus Christ is like Jesus Christ died so that it's kind of similar to what I think JJ said. It's like we are free from the bondage of sin so that we, uh, we're not no, no longer like we realize that we are sinning so then we have the freedom and the choice to like not sin and do God's will. So like in practice, that could be like, you know, using um like maybe like a, a passage of scripture to like help you resist temptation or like to turn away from like sin. Yeah. Yeah, great answer, Joshua. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. And uh hmm. You're laughing in the first line. How about you? Like, how about you? The I sorry, I couldn't figure out your name, but you know, the middle in the first line. Middle in the first line. Alana. Woo! Go, go, go. Um, well, um I mean um the death of Jesus Christ is means should like means a lot to us uh, because we are Christians and we know that um, his sacrifice is like could uh, bring us uh, like thank, uh, sorry my English is not <laughs> uh, so uh, God see us good after Jesus death so it's it's very important that we believe in so I think okay. in practice we should believe him and uh believe us we're we're not sinners anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the effect of Jesus Jesus' death. Yeah, thank you for your answer. By the way, is your is Chinese your your, your first language? Okay. Maybe next time you can you can answer the with Chinese. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me um, have a one more person just to share if you want, if you like to share um, the, um, your thoughts about what does the death of Christ mean for us, for our faith in practice. You know, sometimes we give different answers so others can be really 
beneficial to it. Hmm. I saw my favorite ha hairstyle, you know, the, you know, It's that's my favorite hair. Oh. I don't know the, the guy on, on my, um, on my right, the last row. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that was my ha hairstyle when I was in the college. Yeah. Do you like to share and? Oh. Um, since Jesus wants us to follow him and follow his example, then mm -hmm. since Jesus died for us, then we should uh, also be like, have sacrificial love for each other. And also, the, um, there's that phrase like dying to sin every day. So like, uh, you repent of your sin constantly. Uh, as also like uh being thankful for being saved so you live uh like how he wants you to live yeah basically that wow great answer you mentioned the sacrificial love this is very important thank you for your answer okay <coughs> let's see um very good um, some of your answers are quite um, impressive and it's very important for us to carefully think about the death of Jesus for it is the core of our salvation and also very much the type of our faith. Um, the death of Jesus Christ has many significant meanings for Christians and uh, I wish the following content would help you to build up a picture in your mind of what it is and be grateful to what it is. Um, first, I'd like to share only three, um, only three um, meanings of it. The first, um, the death of Jesus declares God's judgment on sin and our ultimate fate, death. So um, what we should be, you know, we should be the one who die and bear the judgment of God. And, but Jesus took on everything, allowing us to be saved and freed and uh, call our God, our Heavenly Father, through the faith, um, as John 3.16 says. Apostle Paul also gave us a very clear explanation on how does it work. Um, I will read it for you slowly so that you could um, carefully think about the meaning of these uh, scriptures. It's maybe probably too small. <clears throat> but anyway, Romans 8, 1, uh, 1 to 10. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and the death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. But those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, and it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. 
Well, um, when we see Jesus on the cross, um, we should really um, see ourselves and we should see it is the outcome of sin. We should see this is the wrath of God to sin and to this world. Unfortunately, um, so many Christians forgot how serious it is to us. And that's why um, they live a life no different from non-believers. And this is really sad. So therefore, um, again, the death of Jesus Christ declares God's judgment on sin. And, and also it, it declares our ultimate faith that we deserve death. Um, secondly, the death of Jesus Christ reflects the rejection of the sinners towards God's plan. Um, in today's scripture, John 3, 19 to 20, saying, And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and the people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. Um, I'd like you to really think about the nation of Israel. Did the Israelites want to be saved 2,000 years ago? Of course they did. They, they have been they had been under attack by foreign nations for thousand for more than one thousand years, and at at the time of Jesus, the entire Israel was under the rule of Roman Empire. As I mentioned before, even the even John the John the Baptist thought that the Messiah was coming to be a greater King David. The Israelites believed that the Messiah would save them from Rome, and the one shall only save Israel and not the Gentiles. According to the prophets, um, he must be greater than David and wiser than Solomon, and therefore the, the Israelites treated Jesus as if they were saying, Jesus, if you are the Messiah, even if you are sent by God, as long as you don't sit on the throne like David, you will be hanged on the cross like a criminal. A Messiah who cleanses the temple, curses the religious leaders, does not ret 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 uh, does not fight against the Roman Empire, and does not sit on the throne must die according to the will of God's people because they they want something from God but God did not give them. So please remember the death of Jesus Christ reflects the rejection of the sinners towards God's plan. Um, the third, I think this one is um, a little bit difficult for you. Thirdly, the death of Jesus marked the beginning of the Christian Exodus journey. By the way, I, I'm kind of curious, have you ever heard about this? The, 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 the exodus, exodus for Christian. This is very important is and, and quite uh, advanced uh, understanding to the New Testament. Um, you know, before his arrest, Jesus established the Holy Communion with his disciples during the Last Supper. You, you all remember that picture, right? Very famous picture of the Last Supper. Uh, and you see the Judah with a bag of, uh, of money. And uh, the bread was seen. Uh, when Jesus set up that Holy Communion, the bread was seen as the symbol of Jesus' body. And to eat the bread was to consume his body. To be honest, for a long time, I did not understand this passage. And uh, Jesus', Jesus words made me uncomfortable. Eating your body? What does it mean? 
Uh, do you guys have the same same trouble with like me? I'm not sure. But however, if we could connect these verses to the history of Israelites' exodus from Egypt, everything will make perfect sense. Um, you may remember that because of the hardness of Pharaoh's heart, um, the Pharaoh did not allow Moses to lead the Israelites go out of Egypt. Therefore, God sent plagues upon Egypt, right? And uh, you, you probably know that, the, remember the 10th plague was the death of the firstborn. And, and this is the last plague and makes Pharaoh um, compromise to Moses. And, uh, you know, Israelites were instructed to, to smear the blood of a lamb on their doorpost and uh, to eat the lamb, uh, to eat the lamb's meat. And uh, this is the famous festival, Passover. All Jewish people really treat it seriously. They, they celebrate it every single year. And uh, the lamb symbolized the passing over God's judgment and they represented the beginning of the Israelites' depart departure from Egypt. Um, brothers and sisters, Jesus became the Passover lamb. He enabling us to escape God's judgment. His death also signifies the beginning of the second exodus to Christians. But this time, we are not leaving Egypt, but leaving the world, but leaving the worldly kingdom and waiting for the kingdom of God. So this is second exodus signifies that we no longer belong to this world. We are no longer in Egypt. We have become strangers walking in the wilderness. And this is the last meaning I would like to share with you about the Jesus death for us. Um, it's very simple that we have not yet reached our home. So as strangers and uh, travelers in this world, we should, uh, and how, sh uh, how should we live out our faith? At least in terms of defining our own identity, um, we must be soberly aware that we are waiting for the arrival of another kingdom and that our life's meaning is determined by that kingdom, not by this world. So our gaze must be focused on that kingdom, not on possessions that will decay or bodies that will age. Mm. So cars, houses, Gucci, Burberry, Rolex cannot bring us any heavenly treasure. The money, status, power, and the appearance are not what we pursue. So bringing about, I mean, the death of Jesus Christ should give us a heavenly mind, which bring about a change from within and leading us to repentance and rebirth. Through Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit, his death enabled us to be the witness of his cross and willingly to pay any price for our vacation, or, uh, vacation even death. So this is the last one I'd like to share with you guys. Um, I know it's kind of a difficult today is um because it's it's the week before the, the 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 Esther. So I have to share a lot of information with you about Jesus' death. Otherwise, how could you understand his resurrection? So yeah, I hope you guys could have a new perspective through the second exodus, the idea of second exodus to your life. And this is the death of Christ um, means to us. He gave us a new identity, a new kind of understanding to our life. We are like 
he's our shepherd and we are his sheep. So he is like Moses, he leading us out of the Egypt. So I know Vancouver is quite nice. It's a really nice city. But remember, you are strangers here. Okay. Okay. Um, I try to be finish it as fast as possible. <laughs> and uh, do you have any questions, other questions, anything? It's not necessary about the death of Christ, anything about Easter or something else that bothers you in your life. Oh, sorry, Pastor Ken, just an interruption. I did forget my charger for this laptop I'm running the Zoom meeting in. So we might mm -hmm. drop off maybe in like two minutes randomly. <laughs> just want to let oh. you know. But okay. okay. Question still. Okay. I see. Um. Well, we have two minutes. It's very okay. Uh, oh, by the way, that's your kid. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, you were talking about the Christian Exodus. My question is, uh, how do we leave the world, uh, and understand like Jesus sending us into the world? Like, how do we understand like living in the world but not of the world? Yeah, it's it's a great question. Actually, um, I think leaving this world, you, you, you can understand in, in another way, like we are on the way to another promised land. You know, the, 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 um, the purpose of leaving Egypt is to go to the promised land that God prepared for Israelites. And right now, we are waiting for another promised land, which is the kingdom of God. So, so that kingdom is coming to our world with Jesus' second coming. So... That, that's the meaning of leaving this world. It means we live in this world, but we live like we are not of this world. And we don't follow the principles, the rules, and the, the, uh, the values, the types, the popular way people think in this world. We live in another type of life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and our deepest desire is focused on God's kingdom. And that is the internal thing. It's not just you know temporal things. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your question. I guess I'm going to be kicked out in the room in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know, but it will, it's running down to its last 6%. So, <laughs> okay. Cool. Any questions? Anyway, I'm really happy to, to talk to you. And uh, I, I really hope you could, you know, like, you know, uh, share whatever you want with me. Uh, through Facebook or the, the Telegram. Um, oh, I really wish I could be there. Then we can have coffee after this or tea. Yeah. Anyway, I I don't know how much second I I I have, but yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay, you guys have a good rest after this. I know it could be tough. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much, Pastor Kim. Thank you, Pastor Kim. Bye. I see you probably two weeks later. Uh, yeah, probably two weeks later. Or next week. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep posted if we can take this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. That's what I'm not calling.